you know, this is something that uh, has not gotten much coverage in the indie media world. I'm kind of surprised about that. I thought this would be a bigger story. I thought maybe, you know, for example, Kyle Kalinske might find this to be interesting. Maybe the Vanguard guys might find this to be interesting. Maybe even Crystal Ball could have spared a tweet or something about it. You would think. I don't think Breaking Points records over the weekend, but, you know, maybe a little... I'm surprised Crystal and Kyle didn't do, like, a living room selfie video on this because this is pretty significant news, I think, uh, from the Marianne Williams. They, they could have gone back to that 1001 Arabian Nights bedroom. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Why not? Why not pick a new room in the house, give right. us some new scenery, and uh, do a little update on this because it seems very important. So we had news on the Marianne Williamson campaign front. Uh, top staffer Jason Call and campaign manager Peter Dow both left the campaign on the same day. They both put out tweets on the same day saying that they are out. So here is Peter Dow, Hillary Clinton operative turned Bernie bro turned, I guess, anti-duopoly leftist turned Marianne Williamson campaign manager put out this uh, on Saturday morning. Personal note, after much consideration, I've decided to leave Marianne Williamson's presidential campaign where I was campaign manager details to follow so did not reveal his motivation or reason behind leaving uh and then we also saw uh jason call who was uh one of the sort of top staffers on the marianne campaign a director of sorts as i understand uh he wrote the campaign platform along with someone else he mentioned that in his tweet that he has since deleted so i actually have a weird version of this tweet this is a version of the tweet that i texted russell so this is from my phone i pulled this here another announcement i resigned from the marianne williamson 2024 campaign yesterday some wonderful people on the team i hope to work with again i am as proud of the platform that hanny joe dot and i created as anything i have ever done politically i wish the campaign success in the primary now, the interesting thing about this is that Jason Call, as you can see on his handle there, uh, Washington State Second District Green Party candidate 2024. He was a Green Party activist before joining the Marianne campaign. It appears he is running for Congress now uh, on the Green Party line once again you also saw peter dow give a follow-up tweet uh to the one that he put out there he didn't sort of spill any tea about exactly what happened at the marianne campaign that forced him to quit but he put out a sort of post duopoly if you will tweet of his own big capital letters here independent run 2024 of all the election cycles i've been involved in this is the most primed for a viable third-party candidate espousing popular left principles. My mission is to help make that happen. In 2020, I voted green because I oppose the duopoly. Biden's presidency is the ultimate confirmation that the system is rigged to perpetuate the oppressive status quo. A quote-unquote dirty break is one way to do it, but there are more direct approaches. Interesting that two staffers leave and then embrace third party politics like that day that they yeah. leave they start talking about we need to exit the two party system now there's more on that front which we'll get to in a second because there are two different real ways that you can speculate why they left one has to do with the sort of the being fed up politically um with this sort of inside the democratic party strategy the other one, of course, has to do with the piece that uh, came out in Politico a couple months back. We did a whole video on this where Russell put together a bunch of exhibits sort of validating the claims in this article, despite Kyle Kalinske's uh, very, very deceptive 
video that he did trying to debunk them without actually showing the text of the article. So this says here, this is from that article that came out, interviews with 12 people who worked for Marianne during her 2020 presidential campaign paint a picture of a boss who can be verbally and emotionally abusive. Those interviewed uh, say the best-selling author and spiritual advisor subjected her employees to unpredictable, explosive episodes of anger. They said Williamson could be cruel and demeaning to her staff and that her behavior went far beyond the typical stress of a grueling presidential cycle. Quote, it would be foaming, spitting, uncontrollable rage, said a former staffer who, like most people that spoke with the outlet, was granted anonymity because of their concern about being sued for breaking non-disclosure agreements. It was traumatic, and the experience in the end was terrifying. Williamson would throw her phone at staffers, according to three of those former staffers. Her outburst could be so loud that two former aides were counted at least four uh, occasions when hotel staff knocked on her door to check out the situation. All right, so we get all this. Now, we did a piece on this. Uh, if you want more on that, we will link uh, to the video that we put out on this when the story broke uh, in the description of this video once the live stream is up, once uh, we are done here. So it certainly begs the question, you know, uh, was there a sort of, I, even if you don't go as far as to say workplace abuse situation going on, was there some office drama that at the very least Marianne could not handle in a way that kept the team focused, right? I mean, I think that's a reasonable assumption to make um, in the short term uh, if there's no evidence to refute it, given that uh, these guys are being very tight-lipped. Um, the fact that Call deleted his tweet talking about having written her campaign platform, yep. would that have been a violation of some sort of NDA where you're not allowed to talk about the inner workings of the campaign in that way? Who knows? Like I said, we don't know, but given this history, uh, maybe if it's not safe to assume that, it's certainly safe not to rule that out, I would I would think. Yeah. Um, these stories go back 30 years. In the in the video, we're gonna link in the description. We showed this. The political article itself links back to articles from uh, People magazine, and I think it was the LA Times that were writing this kind of stuff about Marianne Williamson 30, 30 years ago. 30 years ago about how Mike Nichols and other people left her AIDS charity in New York and started a separate AIDS charity because of her abusive behavior towards people who were working in it. She fired a woman with cancer from the organization, thereby losing her health insurance. Um, these stories go back 30 years, and they're incredibly consistent. If you go back and you look at those people and LA Times articles from 30 years ago, it sounds exactly like the behavior they're describing in this political article. Um, many people who have worked with her behind the scenes say she is she needs help, like serious psychological intervention. And um, their stories are credible and they're consistent across decades. Somebody who's that deranged as what they're describing, they can try to rein it in in the end in a high pressure presidential campaign if that's who you are. And that's who you've been your whole life. That's who you're going to be. It's going to come out under stress. So my money is on that shit came out. She behaved in an abusive, uh, emotionally unstable manner with the staff. And that on top of the fact that the campaign's not going anywhere anyway, they got out. Yeah, I mean, that is certainly one possibility. Um, like I said, we're going to explore a second possibility here. And look, you know, if, if they don't want us rumor mongering like this, maybe they could have explained why it happened. Right. Well, the, well, there's another thing. All these people talk about. No, no. Look, I'm friends with Marianne. I never made a secret of it. But that doesn't mean that I can't give her a real interview. Not one of these motherfuckers ever asked her about this. And any correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. But we've kind of kept an eye on any major developments with this campaign and major interviews as far as i know nobody kyle kalinsky did that disgusting disgusting video that we dismantled that'll be in the description where he just lied to his audience non-stop for about a half an hour um just lie after lie after lie have any of them asked her about it when they've had her in an interview not not one as far as i know 
So at that point, you have no credibility. You have no credibility. It, you you clearly cannot separate these things if you will not ask her about something that one would think is pretty significant for someone you want to put in charge of our nuclear arsenal. I mean, the Vanguard guys did a stream today, which I watched uh, while I was cooking, so I didn't watch it really intently, but I listened to see if there were any updates on this because I was curious because I knew we were covering it. And, you know, th it got done, like, just sh very shortly before we came on, so I didn't have a chance to, like, get any of the video from today's stream. But they did say, they claimed, right, take that for what, what it's worth, but they claimed to have reached out after they saw Peter Dow's tweet to find out what went on, and they said, yeah, it was office drama. They said it's nothing too bad, but it's kind of office drama. Okay, well, that's... First of all, like I said, if you want to be taken seriously on matters like this, you can't pose for a photo at a wedding that she uh, presided over, <clears throat> number one. Number two, that sounds like someone who's trying to make it sound a lot better than it was, <laughs> you know, trying to put a office drama. Spin. I mean, that kind of reinforces my theory. Office drama. Office, office drama. drama. Oh, did, did Marianne, uh, did hotel people have to come to find out if someone was being killed at a hotel again <laughs> right. is that what you mean by office drama <laughs> yeah yeah was there a samsung galaxy you know in indents in the, in the hotel <laughs> tv you know uh yeah who knows but look the other part of this that i think is interesting is that you have both now peter dow and jason call reaffirming their commitment to third-party politics outside the duopoly politics in the wake of their uh, decision to step down from the Marianne campaign. And what that makes me want to play, because this was an interview that she did with the Vanguard guys on Friday afternoon, in which they asked her once again about the possibility of doing a dirty break and running as an independent. And I think she gives what at this point seems to be the most conclusive answer that no, she's not going to do it. Uh, which, again, that could have informed where they were coming from as well. Let's take a look at this. Question that I wanted to ask you that actually got posed by someone in our audience. Um, Cup of Joy is wondering if you or will you move to independent? Will you run potentially as an independent or third party candidate if, in fact, the DNC decides not to sanction those debates and basically sabotages your candidacy the same way that did Bernie Sanders? I don't see this in the context of the DNC or a political party. You know, Washington warned us about political parties in his farewell address. He said that they would become factions of men more concerned with their party than with their country. And that's clearly what's happened. John Adams said he saw it, political parties as a threat to democracy. At this point, I'm beginning to think there's some truth to that. I'm still holding on to an almost increasingly nostalgic vision of what the Democratic Party has been mm -hmm. and has been in my mm -hmm. lifetime. But the role of the Democratic Party is to facilitate democracy, not to thwart it, not to obstruct it. I'm not doing this for the Democratic Party, although the conduit that I wish to do it within is the Democratic Party that I have grown up to believe in and that I feel this country needs. But my concern is about our democracy, not about the Democratic Party. My concern is about our democracy. Let me just pause this for a second since we're now at what? A minute and 18 seconds, nothing even approaching a real answer right. to the question. Right, word salad. That this person gave $15 in a super chat to. The thing about Marianne is that, you know, unlike the Bernie candidacy, unlike even the RFK candidacy now, the Marianne candidacy is really born of progressive media. Like it was progressive independent online media that basically created the candidacy in the first place. I think RBN uh, was correct to say that essentially Crystal and Kyle recruited her into the race. They really kind of right. twisted her right. arm publicly right. to run. She's tweeted her thanks to Crystal and Kyle out before. It's like she is very, very aware of this space in a way that mm -hmm. I don't really think you could even say Bernie Sanders was really aware of this space in 2016. He probably knew he had support online. But how intimately, uh, you know, involved was he with the Young Turks at that time? How connected were they? How on the same page were they? Not really. And I think RFK is just of a generation and his he's of a certain 
he's cut from a certain kind of cloth that where like this sort of like YouTube space is not really front of mind. Marianne clearly is very tuned into what's going on in the online left world. Sure, surely mm-hmm. she knows how important this question is to the online left people who are fueling her campaign. Like certainly she knows how important it is to answer this in a way that people know what they're getting into. Are you going to fall in line after Biden wins or are you not? And so to be this obtuse about it, given how tapped into this world you are, seems especially sleazy that you won't just give people an answer. Like, you know, this is what people are talking about and you still won't give them an answer. You still do this. Like, it's one thing for Bernie to do this because Bernie had a lot of support from all over the place. There were a lot of people who liked Bernie because he was the most progressive Democrat in the race. But at the end of the day, they plan to vote Democrat anyway. So what are she's pulling at two percent, one and a half of which are people in this space, not like us, obviously, not in our audience. But, yeah, the Vanguard types, some of the Cedar people, some of the TYT people like that's who's. That's who's answering a pollster, I'm for Marianne. So why not give them an answer? Why not give them an actual answer? Um, I Well, I'll answer that. And I've said this from the beginning about Marianne and her fudging on this question. It's one thing for her to play uh, presidential candidate dress up. It's another thing for her to piss off Oprah. It's another right. thing for her to piss off her L.A. pals. Her L.A. pals will laugh off kooky Marianne's wacky presidential campaign. They will not laugh off any threat to jeopardize the reanointment of Joe Biden uh, as as president, as they see it. Um, she that's her social class. Those are her people. That's the base of her power. Those are the people who elevated this fucking moron, this clear, transparent fraud to a position of prominence, power and authority. Like you you should be taking you, you should be taking advice from your from your corner deli man sooner than you should be taking advice from this fucking psycho. Um but that's LA for you. <laughs> you know, I mean she fit right in. She was a perfect guru for them. So they elevated her to this position of prominence and she knows she knows her people. She knows her people. She she can do whatever she wants except promise to actually do anything that actually threatens the democratic party she does that she stops getting invited to parties in beverly hills that's why she'll never commit to that yeah yeah but she won't commit not to it either which kind of makes she's, it uh, yeah she's she's, she's 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 playing she's playing games to keep the fucking beavis and butthead here uh hanging on right like what um, what would happen if she said well no i intend to endorse biden at the end what would happen how would these guys handle it what, what, what would they do? What would they tell the audience? Well, if you look at the fact that, as, as you pointed out, because I sent you that screenshot with the critical drinker, nobody was watching it anyway. Nobody gives a shit. People have moved on. Right. Pe- people who are that desperate for a third party candidate, and you know how we feel about this, or that desperate for a primary challenge, rather. We're all for a third party challenge. Um, you know, they most of them moved on to RFK. Like, right. why would you back Marianne Williamson? Like, if you're going to back somebody to primary Joe Biden, we feel it's a quixotic effort. It's a fool's errand. But OK, fine. You know, some people feel differently. And from what I can tell, most of those lined up behind RFK. So well, that's what the numbers say. That's what I mean, the numbers certainly. say. So who's left to support this candidacy? I mean, it's kind of funny the way this is playing out, as you often point out. Uh, you know, Kyle had that thing. Guys, it's just Marianne. It's just, right, just Marianne. Marianne. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. as soon as it stopped being just Marianne, that, that she had she never had any meaningful polling numbers anyway. And then RFK just walked right in and and blew her out of the water. So there's absolutely no reason for this candidacy at this point. If you really want to back a third part uh, uh, a, a primary challenger, you're probably going to go to RFK Jr. sooner than you're going to go to Marianne. All right, let's watch the rest of this. My concern is about the threat of fascism. My concern is about what's happening at this profound, critical moment in history. So my decision making will be based on my assessment of how I might serve the process of the kind of, I think, radical change, real economic U-turn. And when I say radical, I say it in the way... uh, 
Roosevelt said when he said we must become fairly radical for a generation, radically American in order to uh, offer to the American people the opportunity for a genuine economic U-turn. I will do whatever I feel I can do to increase the chances that we will have that kind of U-turn to uh, decrease the chances that the fascists will not take the White House in 2024. Gotcha. Hey, gotcha. Okay, and by, gotcha. by the way, if you hear That's that in favorite. the background, one of these idiots was clicking a pen through the whole interview. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I couldn't tell if that was clicking a pen or typing. On I mean, computer. it sounds like because it was so consistent through the whole thing, it sounded like it was maybe it was clicking pen a clicking. pen. No, well, no, because this. I uh, offered to the American the people segment. for oh, the yeah. opportunity for a genuine economic U-turn. I will do whatever I feel I can do to increase the chances that we will have that kind of U-turn to uh, decrease the chances that the fascists will not take the White House in 2024. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay, gotcha. As if that was an answer. But right. the answer she gave there at the end, I will do what I can to decrease the chances that the fascists take the White House in 2024. That's very similar to the answer she gave them a few months ago, and very, very obviously in that context means there will be no dirty break. And so that could have also perhaps informed could their have. staff to say, hey, listen, uh, what is this for? You know, she had a Green, a green Party volunteer there. She had Peter Dow there who voted Green last time. Um, you know, it's very possible that uh, they felt like, hey, look, RFK totally came in and stole whatever chance at momentum we ever had, even if it was a small one. And now if she's saying, like, well, what are we going to work for her for a year and only to have her endorse Joe Biden? If you're a Green Party guy, you're not going to go for that. You know, if you're right. someone who's very, very disillusioned with the two party system, you're, you're not going to go for that. So who knows? Perhaps that was what their thinking was. Um, we will have to wait and see. But either way, um, to Wrong have shit. your director, you know, one of your highest ranking staffers and the campaign manager bail in the same day, the day after this interview and, you know, just a couple of weeks after it became very obvious that RFK really took whatever opportunity there was for any sort of momentum. Uh, it's the beginning of the end, I think, for the Marianne campaign. And, you know, one of the things we should make a note of, she stopped uh, paying her staff. She laid off all of her staff on, I believe it was January 2nd. Uh, of 2020 and she kept the campaign going for another three three weeks running exclusively on volunteers so she had totally unpaid staff for the last three weeks of that presidential mm -hmm. campaign mm -hmm. uh saying hey we'll just give it a shot with you know, volunteer only i mean she wasn't going to go anywhere anyway she was pulling low single digits then as she is now um but uh yeah so it's you know she she might keep this going for a while longer running on whatever fumes there are, but uh, obviously, you know, nothing to really minimize um, when your campaign manager and top sort of advisor both call it quits in the same day. You know, what, what, eight weeks after she launched? Yeah. And she actually, she made a pitch for money at the end of this, uh, at the end of this interview. Um, yeah, this is why I've been saying from the beginning, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know we have a lot of people who like RFK. You're, you are extremely unlikely to ever be given the opportunity to vote for these people unless it's as a write-in. This is what we've been saying from the beginning. Like, what are you talking about, New Hampshire? <laughs> South right. Carolina. Right. Marianne's not going to be on any fucking ballot in South Carolina. That's very obvious. I mean, at this point... I, yeah, maybe she'll try to limp along. That's the good thing about having a cult following. You can maybe get by on volunteers for a little while. Um, I, I would say she'll be gone within the next two months. And that is really a rebuke to all the people in the online left space who tried to make this happen, who tried to make this a thing. That That's, that's how much credibility their judgment should have in your eyes going forward. The Crystals the Katie's, everybody, the Kyle's, everybody who pumped this in order to, in our opinion, pump their channels should, should really hang their heads in shame and apologize to their audience for wasting their time with what was 
obviously fucking nonsense from the beginning. You did not have to be Nostradamus to see how this would end. Please clap. 